Hey guys, welcome back. It's Rishi once again, and today we're going to be going through putting words into groups. So by now, you should be quite good at grouping related words and ready to tackle these kinds of questions if you've come across them in your 11 plus verbal reasoning exam. Now, this is all about putting words into groups. So what do, exactly does that mean? And how do you do it? Well, in this video, we'll give you four group of words which are related in some way. And they could be synonyms, which is words with similar meanings, or they could be types of the same thing, like planets, languages, school subjects, etc. And if you're still not sure, don't worry, we've put an example question at the start of the video, and we'll also give you the answer, which explains how these kinds of questions work. Now, a large vocabulary and a good knowledge of English will serve you well here. And this will also help in many other situations, at school, in everyday life, and even in your future career. So I cannot stress enough how important it is to read as often and as much as you can. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this. So as you can see, it states below are four groups of words, all of those in the same group are connected in some way. Once you have worked out what the connection is between the words in each group, decide which group the test word goes into. So your question is, which group does Claire belong in? So again, what we need to do is take a look at each group and see how they match with the word given to us. So if we take a look at group A, all of the words are illnesses. And group B contains words which refer to the state of someone's skin. And then in group C, the words are all fruits, which leaves us with group D describing a number of things. So if we take a look at the word Claire, someone's skin could be described as Claire. So what we could say is that Claire belongs to group B. And that there is our answer, group B. I hope that was a clear introduction. If you're still not feeling confident, that's absolutely fine. Don't be tempted to rush through this video. Make sure you know how the words in each group are related before you decide which one to put the word you are given into. With that being said, let's dive into question number one. So we have four groups here and we're now looking for the word where oven would belong. Have you found the answer yet? Well, if you chose group D, you are absolutely correct. Because all of the words in group D can be found in most kitchens, as can an oven. So it belongs in group D. If you were slightly confused with group B, remember the words in group B are all types of electromagnetic waves, and you'll learn about them at school. Alrighty, question number two. We've got the word mourn. So again, if you take a look at all of the words in group A, they describe parts of the day. And mourn, in fact, is an old fashioned word for mourning. And you might see it in most often in poetry. So it belongs in group A. Now, if we take a look at group C, for instance, now, these are things that you might do after the loss of a loved one and mourn. So that would go into group C if it was spelt as M-O-U-R-N. I hope you didn't get confused on that one. Brilliant work. Let's go for question number three. So we're now looking for the word roll. So instantly, we could be working with synonyms. Now, the word roll is the part an actor plays in a film or a play. So roll instantly would go into group C. However, if we take a look at group A, for instance, 
This would also work with role, as the words in group A are synonyms for the word role, but again, look at the spelling of it. It's got a different meaning and a different spelling. Okay, let's go for question four. So we're now working with the word least. So again, vocabulary will serve you well here. What group do you think this would go into? Okay, let's start with group A. Fewest, minority, tiniest. So that looks like perhaps the size of something. Whilst our word least is almost like borrowed. So if you lease something, you can use it for a short time. And so that way, it would belong in group C. Alrighty, question number five. So we're looking for the word pale. So again, if we take a look at all of the four groups here, I hope you found the right one. And I'm going to go with group C. But why? How does it link to scuttle, kettle and bucket? Well, group C is made up of words which are types of containers. And a pail is another word for a bucket. Hence, it belongs in group C. But if we had the word P-A-L-E, which is the same pronunciation, but a different spelling, it would go in group A, as that contains the words which mean pale or whitened. So again, that's a quick introduction to your homophones, which are words that sound the same, but are different in meaning or spelling. Marvellous. Let's go for question six. So which group does Baron belong in? So again, instantly, if we take a look at all of the words in these groups here, we would select group D. And that is because all of these words describe land which is unable to support much vegetation. Baron means the same thing, so it belongs in group D. And if you got confused with group B, the words in group B are all ranks of nobility. So the word baron, spelt as B-A-R-O-N, would go in there. Okay, let's dive into question seven. We're now working with the word hamlet. So instantly, if we take a look at group D here, these are all types of settlements, as is a hamlet. So it belongs in there too. And then for question number eight, we're looking for the word joy. And instantly, if we see group B here, all of the words in group B are emotions that we feel as in joy. So I hope you're getting a good understanding of this. Let's now move over into our final two questions here, nine and 10. So question number nine, we're looking for the word sibling. I hope you found this one already. And you're right, it is group B. All of the words in group B are members of your family or relatives. And a sibling is a brother or a sister. And then finally, let's go for question 10. We're now working with the word real. So again, instantly, if we take a look at the words in group A here, they describe cylinders of thread, as does real. So it belongs in group A. But don't get confused with group C here, because that would refer to real with the other spelling, E-A-L. Marvellous work. So that there was a short and sweet video focused on putting words into groups. Remember, you will be asked to look at several groups of words which are related in some way. Now these groups are followed by some more words which you must place into one of these groups, making sure that the word is related to the other words in that group. Now it may sound complicated, but it's rather simple as we have seen. So keep up the great work, keep up your practice, and I hope to see you in the next video.